that I, um, it's all good. <laughs> um, I just found that it was like, it was kind of a breaking point for me because of the health complications that I had. Um, but so I started this journey out of a place of like, I couldn't stand like how unhealthy I let myself become or like what I saw when I looked in the mirror. And I know that's like very, like a common thing for people. And while that can be a great motivator, we can't say in that mindset of like, I'm doing this because I hate myself. Like I say this all the time, like nobody has ever loved or hated themselves into loving themselves. You just end up like making some changes and still hating what you see when you look in the mirror. Um, and I'm a testament of that because I went from, you know, being that over 200 pounds to, I got down to the lightest I was, was 127. And just for like point of reference, I'm about five, eight, um, and hold a decent amount of muscle on my frame. Um, and so that was like, extreme, that was like two, three sizes smaller than I am now today. <laughs> um, because I just was like obsessed with how small can I make myself? Because I just like, it didn't matter what the number on the scale said, like I needed more, like it, nothing made me happy because I started that journey from a place of like such self-hate. And so I think that's kind of what brought me or led me to where I am today, where completely shifted focus and became a competitive crossfit, crossfit athlete. Words are hard at this point in the day for me. It's a little bit later um, here in Michigan, but um, so like I had to break all of those old, like sort of self-sabotaging uh, mindset, you know, pattern, like those, those thought patterns, those thought loops that you find yourself stuck in, um, you know, when you start a journey from that stemming from that place of like such just like disgust, really, like, I just was like, ugh. like, and I know I'm not the only one out there. So, um, but yeah, so I shifted into more of like, I want to see how strong I can feel, because, you know, it, it initially it was like the health issues and that didn't help at all. Like it's basically starving myself to get to that weight and doing every possible like quick fix that um, I could research and find at the time. Like you name the diet and I've probably done it or some variation of it. Um, and so anyways, I decided like, I also didn't like feeling that way when I got down to that body weight, like like I said, it wasn't enough. I was like, I was not satisfied. It didn't feel good. I was tired all the time. Um, I was having hormonal issues, like lost my period, um, just all kinds of other issues, right. As a byproduct of like being super restrictive and getting to that place. Um, and so I began to shift into like, I want to see, I started working out more, um, more consistently. And I just wanted to see like, how strong can I get and like, I just started having fun with the barbell on squats and deadlifts. And that led me into, um, CrossFit became competitive there. Um, so kind of been all over the place, but it definitely was able to find the level of success that I did inside of CrossFit, um, for the window of time when I was more competitive because I was doing, I was fueling my body adequately. I was doing things to take care of myself inside of that process and, and to feel better and to be stronger, um, to improve quality of sleep, like all of the things where I really believe that like taking care of yourself in those ways is one of the truest forms of self-love you can give yourself. Um, so I know that was a lot, but <laughs> I don't know what you want to kind of like unpack tonight, but I'm here for it. <laughs> yeah, no, no, that, that was a lot, but it was good. I think a lot of that can definitely resonate with a lot of women. Um, you know, just coming from a place where, where it's never enough. And there's always, there's another diet and another diet. And, and when are you going to stop? I think, I think that, you know, for us to be able to share that we too have experienced that same uh, sort of scenario can be really, really good for them at, in helping to form a stronger connection. As in, you know, they're not the only ones out there and they're not the only ones that, that struggled. So thank you for sharing that. That was really awesome. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think like to your point is, um, you know, what you mentioned there is like, you kind of have two options every single day. And I've heard this quote thrown around quite a bit lately, but it's like, if I still wasn't feeling well, and that was originally kind of like, yeah, I wanted to lose the weight, but I was also like, I don't want to live my life being unhealthy. I don't want to end up like full on diabetic and everything that comes along with that. And 
Um, so it's like ultimately the the choices that I made to get down to that low body weight, they didn't help that health concern at all. In fact, I found myself like passing out frequently because of blood sugar issues, like just hypoglycemia, right? So um at that point, you know, I had two choices and it's either to like rinse and repeat what I was doing or evolve. And I didn't want to live the rest of my life that way. So that's the quote that I keep hearing thrown around lately. And it just like resonates so highly with me is like, you have two choices every single day. Are you choosing to repeat old patterns that aren't serving you anymore? Or are you choosing to evolve into, you know, the future version of self that you truly desire to become? So yeah, no, I think that's super powerful. And that's like really taking ownership too for your health because the other ways aren't, I mean, they definitely, like you said, they don't lead to health in the long run. Um, they're not sustainable. Uh, when you're sharing, you know, about your, you know, how small you got during all of your CrossFit competitions, that's, that's lighter than I am when I step on stage uh, to compete. And that is, <laughs> it's crazy. And yet everybody like idolizes that and worships that, but they don't know how bad we feel. Like you feel really bad. Like mm -hmm. you don't want to do anything, but you can't, you can't stop training either. It's so crazy. Um, and it definitely, is, it can become a, a real cycle of, well, self-sabotage, like you said. For sure. Yeah. I mean, there's obviously like a more sustainable way to do things. And I know I've never stepped on stage or competed. I actually said that I was going to at one point after I was like, um, kind of, I don't want to say giving up, like competing in CrossFit. I'm just not trying to compete at like an elite level. Um, but I can't say that I'll never, like, I just love it. It's fun to me. Um, to an extent, like it's a little bit painful, but <laughs> kind of <laughs> painful in a different way. Right. I imagine then like what you've, what you've done and accomplished inside of like stepping on stage. And as soon as I kind of gave up, like being morally competitive inside of CrossFit, I was like, well, I've always like, people have always tried to like push me in that direction because they're like, well, you have the muscle, you pretty much just need to diet down. And, um, mm -hmm. I'm like, I've always wanted to see how lean can I get now that I did like establish having a lot more muscle on my frame, but is because of that crash dieting history, as soon as I started trying to push towards that at all and become a bit more restrictive, it was just like immediately like lost my period. I wasn't sleeping. I just felt terrible. And like, that's my fault. And that like, if the message today isn't like, you should never compete or step on stage, that's not at all. It's not at all what I'm saying. It's simply like trying to enter into that process. Like, again, going back to the, like, are you doing it from a place of self-love? Are you trying to like speed this up because you hate yourself? Like you're doing so much more damage than good when, when we try to like accelerate that too much. And it was like, my body just gave me pushback. And it, at a certain point, the body composition, like wouldn't budge and all those things are happening. So I was like, okay, like, <laughs> I guess we're just gonna like chill out. Cause I, like, you know, all that, that I didn't want to undo all that work that I had put in. So. Right. Yeah, no, it's definitely a lot and it's, it's hard. And the, the metabolic side of it is so important. And I think there's so many people that don't, they don't understand that at all. And instead they often use, you know, competing as a way, as just another diet tool. Mm -hmm. And that's not how it works at all. Um, you have to do the work on the back end as much as you probably don't want to. I know that that, you know, since you were taking a break from doing the competitive lifting and you've been doing the, the work in helping other women, you've also spent a great deal of time working on yourself. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, <laughs> that's also a process. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. So um, for you to put yourself through the, the same kind of a program as you're putting your clients through, how does that feel? I know it's um, a process. Yeah, absolutely. It's, I feel like it's more aligned for me. Like I, there's always some level. And I think this happens no matter what you're doing. There's always some level for me of like imposter syndrome, even like coaching CrossFit athletes. Like I love the, the women that I still work with that have just been with me, you know, that are still in very into like being competitive, but, um, it's just, 
I, I don't know what it was like, you know, even at the elite level, like I never had as ripped of a physique as some of the other women, like, yes, I had the muscle and all the things, but, um, it just like, there was something about it that just never felt quite aligned for me. And so to answer your question is like, it feels really good because I feel like I am living in alignment. I feel like, mm-hmm. like I wasn't not being true to like, how I coached people before, but I feel like I embody it today. Whereas before it was like, you know, you coach people to (laughs) like do all the things to take care of themselves. But here I was like constantly beating myself up still in the gym and like, yeah, I was feeling my body. I was getting the sleep. I was doing the recovery things like the float tanks, the chiropractors, the getting massage, like all the things, but there was still like that some level of self-sabotage. Like I almost like enjoyed the pain a little bit, like, you know, and, and there's a time and a place for that. But when we look at it from like a longevity perspective and like taking care of yourself perspective, like you do, you ride that line between like, are you being competitive, like in safe, or are you being competitive and potentially like, you know, it being detrimental to different health markers and such in, you know, so much of that, like you mentioned earlier is such like a mental thing. There's like this headspace, and it really took, it really took me stepping away from CrossFit and the barbell to realize how much I was using that as a crutch for like my mental and emotional well-being. where it was almost like it was, it was a healthy outlet, right? It wasn't necessarily like completely unhealthy. Um, but it wasn't solving the root of those issues. And like, like part of me doesn't want to go back to competing because of how much it hurts <laughs> and like realizing how much I was doing that to sort of like hide from the things that I wasn't really like showing myself real self-love with, you know, if, is that making sense? <laughs> it does make sense. Yeah. Yeah. We have a few people on uh, Facebook. So if you on Facebook have any questions, you can drop them in the chat and we can see that there is a little bit of a, of a lag, but um, we can definitely definitely get those answered for you but no that makes complete sense um and it's it's interesting because I've actually taken like all of 2021 off of you know trying to get ready for a show um I got in a really bad metabolic place during my last two preps and then I hurt myself twice um and still did two shows I mean I should have stopped and that's just me you know beating myself up and not not listening to the the good voice in my head like, no, I'll just do this anyhow. So it's been, for me, this past year has been really hard um, because I can't train the way that I want to train. And there's definitely no dieting involved in that. That in itself is hard, but it's a process that everybody has to go through. I mean, if we diet really super hard at some point, it, it goes back because there has to be balance. So in order for us to continually move forwards, we always have to be aware that at some point we do, we will face the consequences. We will have that balance, whether you choose to accept it or, or whether your body throws it in your face, those things, it's just how it works. For sure. And like you said, like, I don't necessarily think it's innately like good or bad, right? It just comes down to like that whole, like the triangle of awareness, right? Like borrowed from nutritional coaching Institute. Like, are you okay with giving up some health markers to chase your performance? And if your answer is yes, like, okay, just know the consequences that potentially come with that. And then what is sort of your exit strategy for when you do feel like you've had enough. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that either, you know? Um, but it is, it's a lot. And that's the thing that people don't realize. And another thing you said there is just like, how hard it is to stop dieting. Like it's just, it's so hard. Like I even like still, if I don't track my, my food today, I'm under eating just because I've been like society, media, whatever conditioned that like, this is how much you should be eating from all those years of like the crash dieting. Right. It's like, I literally will not eat enough if I'm not tracking my food. Like I I'll go, I'll get away from it at times and move into more of like intuitive eating. I just, you know, been doing this for so long is I can do it, but then like the self-sabotage still kicks in and I have to go back to tracking or I'm literally eating. Like I'll start tracking and it's like 14 to 1600 calories. And it's like, Whoa, like, <laughs> that's not, that's not cool. <laughs> right. Yeah, no, I'm the same. And, and with the tracking like that, yeah, yeah. We think that we can manage and we can for a while, but then like one tiny thing will happen in life. And it goes right out the window like that. It doesn't matter. Like, you know, you'll skip 
breakfast or lunch or whatever. And then, you know, you're not getting in enough nutrients, you're not getting enough protein, you're not getting enough calories overall. And it, and it's so easy to just slip right back into that for sure. So easy. It's like, it's insane. And like you said, like, how does it feel to coach the same way that you kind of would like, like treat your own program. Right. And it's like, I do embody it, but I still have to go like nothing that I ask people to do is something that I am not either currently doing or that I don't revisit frequently. Like it just, the way I explain it to people is, um, and I'm sure like you do the same thing is you have to implement it to, to make the change, right. To bridge that gap between like, where are you today? Where do you want to be? We have to have some idea of your calorie balance, your energy balance. So there's just not really any getting around it. And then moving into the intuitive eating, but then it's like, okay, you start to slip further than what you're comfortable. And I don't even know if slips the right word, but it's just like being a human, living your life, whatever. And you have to go back to it. And I feel like that in and of itself is enough. And if we just like learn, like if you're in here and you've been like thinking about working with Clarissa, like you will learn a lot from her about like how, how to get to that place of health and then achieve the body goal that you want in a way where it's not like you have to go back to this dieting. It's just going back to like, rather than jumping into a drastic dieting measure, let's just go back to having that awareness around what you are taking in. And that in and of itself is enough to like for maintenance, right. To maintain once you do achieve that physique that you feel good about, you know, and that you do feel like you look in the mirror and you're like, I look good. (laughs) Yeah, no, that's, that's actually a really big step for a lot of people Mm -hmm. is is being able to maintain and then being happy with, with what they see. It's for sure. I know I, people always say, I've heard this too, is like the day you step foot in the gym is the day you're forever, either like trying to make yourself bigger or smaller, like one or the other. And I'm like, (laughs) there's so much truth to that because you know, and that's part of why I wanted to like also take a step back from CrossFit is I just beat myself up inside of that sport for years and years and years. And I never took like ample recovery. So I'm like, kind of like, it sounds like what you've been doing is like, well, let me take a step back and just focus on feeling better, the longevity aspect of things. And, um, you know, it's just like, there's so much good that takes place when you do take a step back. Part of that for me was like, I honestly, like, I think CrossFitters look amazing, but I honestly didn't like love that exact physique for, for me. Just like, I'm, I still have, I I would say like, I'm not unhappy, right? Like I love, like, there's so much shift that's happened, but like, I'm, I'm about five, eight, like, I'm not a little, like, I'm not a small female, like in our society, you're so conditioned to like, just shrink yourself as a woman. And like there's still some of that there, you know? And so part of me was like, I don't want all of that. Like, I love having muscle on my frame, but it was a lot compared to like what I ever expected. Mm -hmm. Um, when I started competing in CrossFit, everybody's like, Oh no, you got to like work really hard for that. But then I fell into like, I'm such a competitor. I'm like, well, I'm working hard. I'm gaining all the muscle. And (laughs) I guess it's a good problem to have, but then it was like, it was a lot for me. And I was like, it was fun to be able to walk in the gym and like crush whatever workout was in front of me. But then there was also that piece of me that was like, I don't know how comfortable I really am. Like it, you know, so there's like, people don't consider that end of the spectrum too. And I'm sure you've probably felt that way at times. Like you look, and don't get me wrong. Like I think you look amazing. And like, I love that look on women, but like, I still had a hard time being comfortable at that size for me, you know? So it's just like, and people don't consider that. No, no, they don't. And yeah, there are times when I feel huge and I'm not, I'm not huge. I'm, I'm only like five, four, but, um, I am sturdy and I know that I'm very sturdy and yeah. So when I stop dieting and, and I can't train as hard as I want, and then there's some fluff on top of the sturdiness, I feel really big. And, um, I know it's not like a forever thing. Like I do not have to live in this space forever and my metabolism will get better. And, you know, I can go back to being at, at a weight that's more comfortable and that I'm a little bit happier at, but there's nothing wrong with the place I'm in. It's really, it's something that my body needed and that's okay. And choosing to be okay with it though, is, is, um, it was hard in the beginning. I'm okay with it now. I'm like, whatever it, it, like I said, it's not forever. And there are different things are different, um, 
benefits, I guess, to not being in that super lean state all the time. Like I like my fan, I like my husband, um, which I, I don't when I'm super lean <laughs> and, and I don't fall asleep on the couch and I can make it through, you know, training sessions with my clients. So those are real big benefits that, and things that don't happen when I am, you know, ready to get on stage. So there's definitely seasons. And I think the more that people can learn to understand that, um, the easier it makes the whole process. For sure. I think people have this like false, like image of this future reality of like, I'm going to get to this place. And, um, like when I, when I speak in terms of maintenance, depending on the individual and like their frame and all of that, it's like, you should maintain within like five to 15 pounds, depending on the season of where you're at throughout, you know, and you can get, you can narrow that over time, the more metabolically flexible you become, but like you've you know, said inside of your journey is that's like a huge piece of it. Like you have to restore what's not working optimally with the metabolism to even earn the ability to narrow that window to where maybe instead of five to 15, it's like, you know, three to 10, depending on where you're at in that season, like that's a healthy maintenance. Like if you're constantly in more than a small nutritional deficit, like things are not going to continue functioning optimally. Like your body will move into fight or flight. It doesn't care if you want to lose body fat, if it's stressed out. So it's such like an important key factor. And um, I don't know if you knew that, that I actually worked with Jason when he was still nutrition coaching and literally he spent 18 months just putting me through a reverse protocol mm -hmm. before my body would start going back the other way. And that's another thing that's very hard for people. And inside of that reverse protocol, I gained about a pound per month. And so 18 months, like you do the math, like I was not <laughs> comfortable. I was not comfortable at all. But ever since doing that, I never have had to do as long of a reverse protocol. I think the longest I've done is like four, four and a half months since then. And it was after like trying to be a bit extreme again. And it's just like, you learned your lesson. <laughs> like, don't keep doing that. Like you're not going to become more metabolically flexible. So if you really like, if, if you've been thinking about, you know, working with Clarissa, like she's coming out of that time right now, or she's in the midst of it. Like, it's nice to be doing it alongside of somebody that's in the same boat. Like it's like, there's something about it just, you know, mentally that it's very helpful. So, I mean, get to where you want to get, but like, don't forget to take care of your metabolism. So you can narrow that maintenance window and you can feel good, like all the time, even if you're on like the high end of your, you know, fluctuation or whatever. So that is a really great form of self-love. <laughs> yes, it is. It is. And it's not thought of like that. Um, I think they have a tendency to think that they're undoing all of the progress by, mm -hmm. by doing that. And that's not the case at all. And I think like, if you go back to, like you were talking about the triangle of awareness where we have the, we have the different season, you know, like, do you, do you want to look good? Do you want to perform good? Or are, are you um, working on your health? And people think that they can have all three of those at the same time, but you can't. Unless you're a genetic freak, they are few and far between. Right. <laughs> but the rest of us, like it's, we don't make the rules. We're just the messenger. Okay. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, we, we can't defy science yet. Right. Biology or physics. Um, <laughs> Working on it. <laughs> for sure. All right. Well, I think that's some wonderful information. Um, we don't have any really comments in, in Facebook besides um, Sue was on here and popped off because her Zoom wasn't working. Um, but what I can do is if we have people, you know, that ask questions, are you in the group? I'm not sure if I am or not, but I should be. <laughs> well, if you're not, I'll, I'll get you added. And that okay. way, if people have questions, you can, you can get back to them. But um, we can go ahead and wrap it up. Thank you so much for your time tonight. Absolutely. Really Thanks for having me. It was fun. We'll have to do it again. Absolutely. Um, all right. Wonderful. Thank you so much for your time. And if someone wanted to follow you on social media for more of your, you know, tips and information that you have on self-care and loving yourself, where can they find you? 
Um, so I would say mostly Instagram. Um, Jillian Lee, uh, the Lee is spelled fancy because I'm fancy. <laughs> so it's L E I G H. So Jillian Lee underscore nutrition. Um, and pretty much, yeah, I, if you decide you want more of something from there, then I can show you where to go. But um, a lot of a lot of that stuff you can find there. Um, and like, we can do this later, but I definitely want to also invite you in. I'd love to hear more about like the vegan secrets that you have for, for my community. So we'll have to bring you in for that. Cause I know you have a ton of value to add with that. So that would be fun. Yeah. Anytime. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us and I'm sure we'll talk to you again soon. All right. Have a good night. Thanks again for having me. Absolutely. Bye. Okay, she left real quick. Oh, it's still recording. Where is